Hello, everybody, and welcome to our live studio show here on MXGPTV.com with me, Paul Malin, and Lisa Leyland. It's round four of the FIA Motocross World Championship, the MXGP of Portugal, and we return to the sand clay-based circuit of Agada. And uh, we're getting ready to go racing once more. But uh, Argentina was two weeks ago. We're no longer on holiday, are we, Lisa? <laughs> we're getting ready to go back to work. Are you ready? I am ready. And we, it's been a while since we've been here in Portugal. And it's just a nice track to come to. It's been on the calendar for years and years. So it's good to be back, isn't it? Absolutely. Well, look, yeah. uh, on our studio show today, we've got uh, Mikkel Harp. He's already in. Ruben Fernandes and Jason Thomas coming in from Fly Racing. And uh, it'd be good to see him as well, all the way from uh, across the pond. But Mikkel, big van world, MTX Kawasaki. Good to see you. And I tell you what, you know what? Someone has been eating their wheat a bit lately <laughs> because uh, <laughs> you've had a good you've had a good breakfast this last few races because you're fourth in the championship. Um, it's been a good start to the season, hasn't it, so far? Yeah, I, th I think I've just been very consistent. Uh, nothing crazy, at least in the first two rounds. Just uh, doing what I could, uh, gaining as many points as possible, and uh, yeah. I've been not outside the top 10 since I started the season, so I think I'm doing pretty well. Uh, and I'll try to just continue this uh, this rhythm and, and continue making those top 10s. I think it, it seems to be working pretty well. Good. Well, look, in the off-season, you, you stayed with Kawasaki, but you changed teams. You're now, as I said, with uh, Big Van World, MTX, uh, Kawasaki team. How much has kind of that shift to that team um, I mean, it could have been another team, but that team in particular. Um, how much has that had a, a, a bearing on where you're at at the moment in terms of results and where you're feeling in terms of confidence and everything else? I mean, not having to change brands is, is a big thing, especially because we only had a couple of months before the season started sure. again. Uh, so that definitely helped as well. Uh, and I felt very comfortable in a Kawasaki already. Um, and and the way the team suited me with uh, with Steve and everyone has just been very good for me, and uh, I've been able to be a little bit more relaxed, calm, and uh, I feel like everybody around me is working really well together just to to get this thing going. And um, I, I I feel yeah I feel really happy about the decision I made, and and uh, yeah it's been really good so far, and hopefully we can continue this uh, feeling. Cool. Definitely. Well, in Patagonia, Argentina, third overall. Just tell us how good was it to be back on the podium? Because it has been a while, hasn't it? I think it was Matali 2020. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It was, it's a long time ago. And uh, we've been working really hard since then. Uh, but the podiums just haven't been coming. Mm. Uh, and we worked really, really hard for this one as well. But uh, no, it, it f felt so good to be back on the podium. Uh, I mean, it... it I feel like I've had good races early also in the seasons previous, but I mean, things just clicked a little bit more and the stars was there and uh, I made some great passes, which uh, which eventually led me to the podium. But I feel like yeah. when you look at it, there's so small differences that sure. makes the podium. Yeah. I mean, if in first mode, if I didn't make the pass on last lap, I wouldn't have been on the podium. So it's that those small things that can make the difference and uh, it makes it also very interesting you sure. know yeah. well there were two slightly different races weren't they this footage is from race two but I mean you look so comfortable out there and, and it can you can see it in your riding can't you yeah I, I was just relaxed trying to do my best and didn't focus so much on where I was in the race mm. I was actually very surprised in that first moto when I went down and I was outside top 10 um, and I was surprised how quick i made my way back sure. up into the yeah. top five let's say uh because usually when i'm outside the top 10 it takes some time you know and I, i'll finish typically around like six seven but just made my way through and eventually i finished fourth in that race which was pretty good i would say you had to deal with the pesky gas gas boys <laughs> <laughs> both of them <laughs> they're never they're ne not so easy to pass but i mean it made it fun and interesting and uh, the racing was great the track was nice yeah i mean this track is always great uh, especially because of the speed you have and the width of the track. Uh, so, yeah, for me, it was just a really great weekend all in all, you know. Well, obviously, that was um, race two where you finished third. But I actually thought race one was your better performance. You were stronger. And you mentioned it before that how easy it was or much easier it was to get back to that fourth place. Yeah, I mean, until <coughs> I, I went from 12th to fourth and I was almost in third on that last lap. So... It was quite an impressive run, I would say, and I was surprised how how well I did passing people, you know, because in that second motor, yeah, I was in fifth or sixth, and I was just, you know, slowly working my way in, not not as spectacular as the first one. So I was very surprised when I came in, like, oh, okay, yeah. it, it works. I mean, the speed is there, you know, I don't mm -hmm. have to worry so much about it, and I think that's what made me more relaxed also for the second motor. I knew, like, I passed a lot of guys coming into that position in first one so so it was not a problem for me in that second one when I 
just kept on two wheels. Sure. Well, um, I think you mentioned it yourself. Overall, you've been pretty consistent, always inside the top 10. But just tell us about the first GPs. How were they for you in Italy and uh, Mantova? Well, the bike for me was very new in Metzli and Mantova. Uh, and we've made some changes since then. Uh, just a uh, minor change. It's nothing crazy. It's st still the same engine and bike. But, I mean, there's always things you can improve on. And uh, I feel like we've, we've kept going in the right direction. But I didn't have as much time on the bike, only three three test days I had uh, before going to Metali. So obviously every time I go on the bike, I feel more and more comfortable because it's not the same bike as I practice on. Um, and I think that's what makes the difference because mm. slowly my Saturday starts to become better and better. Uh, in Metali, it was really difficult for me because, yeah, the track was t technical at the same mm. time and I was struggling a little bit to get the feeling with the bike and stuff. But as as I get more and more feeling with the bike, it, it, it's better for me as well on Saturdays, which may give me that right start gate pick for for the sundays mm. just just real quick um where are you based at the moment back in denmark or yeah. yeah okay so is that the reason why you're not getting the time on the race bike and you've got a different practice bike setup and, and things like that yeah so at the moment i basically practice on a stock bike just the exhaust is, is uh is different so and that's why the difference is quite big but me and steve is working on getting a bike ready that i can practice on which is a little bit close or similar to the race bike uh so yeah during your season there will definitely be small steps that will improve my my racing as well because it, it will make it easier for for me just cool. yeah um and briefly uh fourth in championship at the moment i know it's early still uh, and as you said you've already had some good race at the beginning of the season previously what would be an ideal or satisfactory season for you um I would just try to prevent to make as many mistakes. Uh, I think if I can continue just making these top 10 uh, races, obviously there will be mistakes, but to minimize them as much as possible and then uh, continue to, to battle for the podiums, I think that would be the, that would be the dream scenario at least. Uh, but there will be a lot of work to do because it's not easy and people are going quick. Uh, but yeah, just trying to be consistent and then I know... My speed will be there, so eventually the results will come. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, look, uh, Michael Harp, thanks for joining us. Um, all the best this weekend and for the rest of the season. And uh, who knows, maybe another podium this weekend. Hopefully. <laughs> I'll try. I'll do my best. Sure. All right. I've put a good word in already. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, uh, that was uh, Michael Harp. Uh, Ruben Fernandez getting ready to join us now from Honda 114. Before we meet him, though, let's take a look at some highlights. MX2 Race 2 from Patagonia two weeks ago. Five second borders turn. Good jump from everybody over on that right side. Who goes around the outside? I think it was Langenfelder or Langenfelder it was who grabbed the foxhole shot then. This time, Yago Kietz right there in second position. Vial third as they head over the first hill. Kietz knows he's got a strike early. Doesn't want to deal with the threat. This is what he did to Vial in race one. Vial cut back on that occasion. Langenfelder not able to do the same though. Gitz leads on lap two. Vial, he'll try and out drag the German down the pitch straight. Has to cut back to the inside. He'll now switch it back. Oh, he decides last minute to go around the outside and it paid off. Perfect race prep that from the 28. Vial moves into second. And we've got a battle for the lead here. Vial gets up the inside of the Belgian, takes over the lead at the end of lap five. It's Vial, the fastest rider on track that time around and the fastest lap of the race. Nothing in it between these two. Guadagnini and Harp, third and fourth in the race, battling for the third step of the podium in this third round of the MX2 World Championship. It is not going to be an easy task finding his way past the former Junior World 125 champ, unless he does something here, and he, that's exactly what he does. Chucks it in, gets in and out early. Harup is up to third. Borgmo frustrated now. Back alongside the 516 of Langenfelder. Has to go. Oh, brave move. He went round the outside. Wow. Borgmo up into fifth place. And Tom Vial will win the Patagonia Argentina Grand Prix. That is a big win and a big boost in confidence for the Frenchman.
So Hart, third overall this weekend. His second career podium in MX2. Second overall, Yago Kitts, a winner in race one, second in race two, shares the same points as the eventual winner. Red Bull KTM Factor Racing, Tom Vial, his 15th Grand Prix victory. He does it here, Patagonia. everybody welcome back to our live studio show here on mxgptv.com with me paul malin and lisa leyland where our second guest is joining us now from honda 114 motorsports ruben fernandez who i've just learned might just be from portugal <laughs> or is that your imagination there lisa i was joking <laughs> i was you joking i was joking should have heard the conversation we had a moment ago had everybody <laughs> in here cracked up anyway ruben welcome to not your home gp <laughs> no but it's close close two yeah. hours two hours away from Ionka. yeah so Good to know. <laughs> Good to know. Well, there you go. Uh, well, look, um, it's your rookie season in MXGP, and it looks like you're really enjoying it. Yeah, actually, things are going well. Uh, well, it's a little bit up and down with the motors. You know, I had that crash on Argentina first motor and stuff, but, but it's going well. I feel like I'm improving. I'm, I feel like getting more comfortable with the bike, and, uh, and yeah, I think we're not doing bad at all. So mm. I'm happy with it. We see big riders, as in the size, you know, coming from MX2 into MXGP and, and they say, oh, I'm looking forward to riding the 450. It will suit my style and my frame and everything else. And it doesn't always work out for some of those guys. But mm. it looks like it's, it's working for you. Why do you think that is? Why do you like the 450 so much? Well, I think I feel like also this year is the first time I have um, one bike. Well, the same bike than everyone, let's say, you know, on 250, I feel uh, we had a competitive bike, a very competitive bike last year, but still we were a little bit uh, far from the factory bikes. And also, uh, as I was one of the biggest guy of the of the category, then I felt like I had a little bit of um, how would you say it? Um, a bit more work to, to do. A bit more work to do, yeah. But still, I was enjoying the 250. I like I like a little bit more the 250. I think it's a fun, a little bit more fun to ride. But it's it's going well with the 450. Mm -hmm. I feel like getting more comfortable uh, each time I ride. So uh, so that's also uh, feeling great. So yeah. well, you had a fifth in race two in Matali. Then you went five six in Mantua. Are you surprised with these results or not so much? Um, well, not, yeah, I don't know what to say, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, I guess, I guess I were, I was happy with those results, to be honest, you know, uh, I just tried to keep it solid, be close there from the, be close of the top guys, mm -hmm. uh, still it, I miss a little bit to be with them, but, uh, we're getting closer and, and I'm feeling better and better. So, uh, so yeah, I've been, I've been doing good, uh, on my opinion, I'm happy with my results and mm -hmm. I think we're, we're doing better and better. Well, you made some nice passes in Mantova, but would you say you need to be more aggressive in MX2 or MXGP, or or is it pretty much the same? Uh, well, MX2 felt to be a little bit more intense first laps, you know. Uh, MX2. Yeah, right. here is a little bit more difficult to have uh, to make that difference. You know, everyone is so close to each other with the 450, and it's difficult to make the passes happen. But but yeah. I don't know. I, I enjoy both of the classes. Yeah. Both of them are good. Oh, look, there was a pass. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of them, yeah. <laughs> well, look, um, you know what? Argentina was interesting. Um, first time there, how was the overall experience with the fans and the track, first of all? was really good. I felt like I was uh, one of the locals there, so, mm. uh, so that was... That was really nice. I feel like Argentina uh, really enjoyed the motocross, and that's a really nice uh, thing to experience. And uh, the track, uh, the track was good, really good layout. To be honest, it was very fun. But it took me some time to get used to the, um, to the type of uh, ground. To be honest, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it was. Um, it looks different on TV. It looks a little bit better. I thought it was like uh, it was going to be one of my favorite tracks. Yeah. But I struggled a little bit, especially on Saturday. Sunday, I felt a little bit better. But, but, you know, it's kind of sketchy and uh, slippery. So, uh, sure. But, yeah, at the end, it got, I got a little bit used to it, and it was better. Remember when you came on our studio show in Latvia a couple of years ago, and uh, you had that one crash, and you said, yeah, that race was going really good until it didn't? <laughs> yes. <Yeah>? Yeah. <laughs> race one, Argentina. This is not race one, by the way. This is not the crash. But um, 
race one. Yeah, that's the same. You led until you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> but um, but you know what? It was uh, that was a good start. But race two was solid. You you uh, you got into fourth. Um, you know, with a pass on, uh, on I think on Jonas, and then eventually you find your way past. Uh, uh, Jorge for third on the final lap. Mm -hmm. um, top Spaniard. Cool moment? Yeah, a uh, <laughs> little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a good moment to make a pass on last lap and then get the, my best uh, result on a moto. That, sure. was, that was great, definitely. Yeah, nice to get that top three. Yeah. Because yeah, you yeah. had quite a few in MX2, and then uh, obviously, but to do it in the Premier class yeah. as a rookie. Yeah, that was really great. Especially after coming from first motor where it didn't go that well. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're sixth in points at the moment. Given your results, how far away would you say you are from the podium? And what would it take for you to get there? Well, uh, two motors like a uh, second motor in Argentina will be great. Mm -hmm. I think it will be possible. But still, I don't want to focus a lot on that. Uh, you know, I just want to be solid, finish two motors, get two points, mm -hmm. uh, two good, two, uh, get two times good points, you know, on the motors. And then uh, I guess it will come by itself. But I don't really want to focus so much on that. I know it could happen, but, but we, keep it, we keep it cool. Okay. Um, keeping it cool. What about this place here? We're back in Portugal. Uh, we were just talking before we went live. Actually, you had you, you were showing good speed here in your EMX 250 days. Mm -hmm. um, is it a track you like here, Agatha? Uh, yes, it's one of my favorite track from 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 all the calendar. I think it's a great track, great layout, and I think also a good uh, ground when they work it out well. So uh, also I enjoy a lot racing in Portugal because I like the Portuguese people. Since I was a kid, I always came a lot uh, racing here. And, uh, and a lot of fans from Spain are coming over, so uh, it's going to be a great GP, and, uh, and I hope to, to do well. So where you live then, two hours or so north from here by car, yeah. is the ground, are you used to this kind of dirt on this side of the country, Portugal up into Spain, or not really? Yeah, we, we, could, we could say at, my par at the part I live in Spain is kind of a mixed soil. It's not so hard pack, okay. like uh, if you go to Madrid or anything like that, you know, then it's like an uh, of asphalt if you let mm -hmm. it dry and mm -hmm. you don't work it. But where I live is also, it's like mixed, mixed soil. It's not too hard, not sandy. Mm. It's just good. I like mixed soil. Same. It's, uh, <laughs> it's the best kind of soil. <laughs> but look, uh, Ruben, all the best this Thank weekend you. and for the rest of the season. Uh, you're riding really well at the moment in 450. Keep it up yeah. and uh, keep that smile on Libby's face. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ruben. And uh, we'll, we'll see you over the course of the weekend. Well, look, uh, Jason Thomas getting ready to come and see us now from Fly Racing. But before we catch up with him, let's catch up with some highlights from MXGP Race 2 from Patagonia two weeks ago. They're trying to make a move early on. Will he cut back to the inside here? He thinks about it. That's exactly what he thinks. And he reads it well. Geiser leads on the opening lap. Prado tries to cut back. Didn't realise Jonas was there. And he loses second position immediately. And Jonas off the side of the track. But he somehow manages to stay there. Needs to be mindful of Renault, who cuts beautifully to the inside, takes fourth away from the Spaniard, or does he? Yes, he does. And Renault immediately going after Jonas, and that third place doesn't want to hang around. He knows he's got a, not just the opportunity of getting on the podium, as Jonas a little bit untidy through there, and it cost him time as well, and he loses that third place to the Frenchman. Fernandez to get alongside him, so he's got to control the inside here, and he can't do that. Fernandez is back in the fourth place. In 
fourth place in the race, doing his best to keep the standing construct rider behind him, but to no avail. And Jonas is back in fourth place. Geis is saying, I don't want any involvement in any altercations. All I want to do, do my job, win the race, stand on the top step of the podium, hear my national anthem, and then do one. Get back to Europe, focus on Portugal. The Spaniard who goes to the outside and then loses a position here. Well, he tried to defend there. He tried to outsmart Renault by going, you know what, I can hear you on the left. I'm going to cut you off on the left. Guess what? Renault went to the inside and outsmarted him. Moves into second place. But Jonas got his hands full here of Ruben Fernandez, though. Cuts back to the inside. Big handful of gas. Side by side, the 41 and the 70. Jonas squeezes him to the inside. He's going to have to go defensive here. That's exactly what he does. But the two riders bang bars on the way out. Fernandez terminates Jonas. And Tim Geiser, already with 162 top three race finishes, will make it 163. But more importantly, his 90th Grand Prix podium, his 36th as a winner, and his 70th race victory. Maxim Renault over the line, second. We'll see you guys next time. Yes, you the fans. Thanks for making this Grand Prix very special indeed, as always. Geiser continues to lead the championship by 17 points as we head to round four. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our live studio show. Part, our final part, actually, part three on MXGPTV.com with me, Paul Malin, and Lisa Leyland. Our final guest is joining us now, fresh off the plane from the United States, Fly Racing's Jason Thomas. Jason, great to see you and uh, great to see you back in MXGP. Um, before we talk and dissect the, the sort of main protagonists uh, in MXGP this year, talk about last year. Um, those last few rounds, the championship really had everything, didn't it? It kind of took the whole championship to a whole new level. Yeah, it was an all-time championship. I, I think we realized it in the moment, uh, but then you flash forward to 2022 and the injuries we've had and you, we're missing two of those protagonists there. So I think we'll get back there eventually. But uh, yeah, when you look back on 2021, it's probably going to want to be one of those years that a decade from now, we'll still be talking about it. Yeah. Well, you mentioned the two protagonists. There's no sign of Roman or Jeffrey yet. Um, but I guess if you're Tim Guy, so you probably don't mind that so much. Uh, what have you made of the HRC man so far? Well, he's doing what he needs to do. You know, I think coming in, he was the favorite when you take those other two guys out. And I don't think he needs to win the championship in one round. Just be there week after week after week. And he's doing that. You know, if the win is there, take it. If, if the podium is the only thing that's available that day, that's okay too. Uh, but he's obviously established himself as the man to beat. When he's riding with this much confidence, um, you need to be a, a brave person to, beget, uh, to, to bet against him winning a, a fifth title at the moment, don't you? I wouldn't bet against him. No. Uh, you look at who he's up against, um, a lot of young guys. And, and I think really everyone was pointing to Jorge Prado to see if he could m make that next step and really challenge for the championship. And he hasn't necessarily been there yet. More, it's been more Maxime Renault that's uh, been more of the challenger to this point. And just, uh, just when you watch him ride, though, Tim, everything looks solid at the moment. When he's riding within himself, bike, rider, everything perfects out. Well, and I think he's riding within himself. Yeah. Uh, those other two guys that are missing really made him push. And that's when we've seen him get into trouble. I think he's backed it down a few percent and he's just trying to win races every single week. And whether it's one or two, it just may make sure you're on the podium overall. Sure. Okay. Well, you mentioned Maxime Renault last year's MX2 world champion. Um, what do you make of his performance? Because he hasn't wasted any time, has he, finding his feet in the premier class? No, it's, and it's a rider I owe an apology to. Um, I was <laughs> very much in the camp of I thought he should stay in the MX2 class. I thought he should develop more. But he's come out and proven many people wrong, including myself. Um, to be this consistent and this fast at the front has really caught me off guard. And, uh, yeah, he's to me, he's really been the story of 2022 so far. Yeah, and it's no surprise for, for people on this side of the Atlantic, though. Um, even since he was 15 years old, he's been riding a 450 here and there for fun. And he's always said that he 
you know, has always enjoyed riding. It goes back to what we were saying mm -hmm. with Ruben a moment ago. Mm -hmm. You get a big guy, but when you're 15, he wasn't that big, uh, Maxim Renault. But, you know, in his latter MX2 years, he's obviously trained on it during the winter. So he came in, I, I guess, more ready than anybody else. And I suppose getting that first race win here in Argentina just two weekends ago, um, and obviously in his rookie season, how much will that boost his confidence going forward in the championship? And, and what does he need to do from here to sort of maintain that and sort of maybe do more than just that one race win? I think he's in a little bit of a ceiling discovery mode right mm -hmm. now, right? He gets that race win. He's outperforming everybody's expectations except for maybe himself. Uh, so I don't truly think he knows, nor do we, where this tops out at. Um, I think every weekend he goes out, he's gaining confidence. If he's able to consistently beat Tim in the future, that's only going to bolster that confidence. So... Sky's the limit, honestly. Uh, it's really, really impressive to watch unfold. Yeah. Okay. Well, whilst Tim has won the first three GPs, he hasn't won all the races. Um, Jorge Prado's won two races. But he, he did seem to struggle in Argentina, though, didn't he? Yeah. And it, to me, that's not necessarily a track that really favors Jorge. Uh, he's more of a precise. Uh, I think he likes slower tracks where you have to really pick your line and be smart. You know, Argentina is more of a wide open and really push the limit type mm -hmm. track. And I don't think he's necessarily that comfortable there. So it wasn't surprising to see him not win. But I will say a track like this here in Portugal, this is much more suiting for him. And I think if he wants to get back into championship contention, it has to start tomorrow. Mm. Obviously, this was uh, his first race win of the season at Matali. Um Second time around, Matterley. <laughs> right. <laughs> but this is the kind of track you're on about, isn't it? it Rutsy, is. technical, this is where Prado shines. Yeah, and, and a track like Matterley doesn't reward uh, pushing the envelope. You know, you have to, if you take too many chances on a track like Matterley, you end up on your head. Uh, and that's really what Jorge is good at. And, and I think that same type of track as we move forward throughout the series he needs to get race wins when we move to those mm -hmm. um where are the likely challenges to come from then uh, we've obviously spoken uh jorge we've spoken about maxim uh, what about jeremy c where people like ruben fernandez uh, or is tim just too good at the moment do you think i think consistently to be tim is going to be a tall tall order but there will be opportunities on individual weekends uh, i think you're seeing fernandez he is progressing much much more quickly than i would have thought as well but if you are going cold enough if you're jeremy c where when things unfold for you, get a good start, and you don't have the the top guys at the front, you really need to make the most of that. And if it's not a race win, make sure you're on the podium because there will be opportunities in this series with how many injuries we've had. Mm. Um, briefly on MX2, um, we've got the, the sort of tame, same two guys working their way to the top at the moment. Yago Kiets arrives as a championship leader. Tom Bial now in second. Are we looking at a two-horse race again for those two, or should we see a little bit more from Langenfelder, from uh, Kaida Wolf and you know, Mikkel Hart, people like that. I think it's similar to MXGP where, yes, individual weekends, there will be guys that have a great race or that have a good day. But over the course of a series, those two just look like they're too strong. Uh, they're too fast. And you, we've already seen some attrition. Those guys are up and down a little bit. We see DeWolf go out. We see Langfelder go out. Um, but those two at the top just seem like they can do it week in and week out. And they have the experience of running at the front, too, which is really important in that MX2 class. Mm. Well, look, uh, just sit there for a moment. Um, just before we do disappear, just a quick reminder about MXGPTV.com, of course. So if you're watching us live on the studio show here on Facebook or on our YouTube channel, and you're wondering how you can want to watch MXGP live, uninterrupted, every single round, of course, go to MXGPTV.com by now. Uh, every round, every race from the 2022 season, including the Motocross of Nations at the end of the year as well. Too good to, uh, to miss. So uh, if you don't have it, then uh, there's the option right there. But uh, before we go, Jason, uh, new track here. Have you been here before? Actually? I've never, never. So first time for you. What are your first impressions? Uh, I mean, it's beautiful, right? And uh, it honestly reminds me much more of an American track than most of the MXGP circuits do. Uh, the dirt is very consistent with the orange clay that we'd see in America. So I kind of feel at home, um, you know, I'm becoming more and more comfortable being in Europe and at, at, you know, these MXGP events. So I'm really excited for it. We have beautiful weather, uh, thankfully, and uh, should be a great weekend. All right. Well, look, uh, Jason Thomas, Fly Racing, uh, thanks for your time here. And obviously you'll be with us in MX2 and MXGP qualifying races and the main races tomorrow as well. Uh, before we go, just a, a quick look at our timetable then coming up later on today. First race of the day will be, will be live, uh, 2.40 local time with WMX Race 1. And then, of course, we've got EMX 250 back on the bill and then uh, the MX2 and MXGP qualifying races. Uh, and then you can catch us tomorrow as well. So uh, that's it. Studio Show 4 in the books. Thanks to Lisa. Thanks to our guests, Michael Hart, Ruben Fernandez and Jason Thomas. Uh, we'll see you next time in a week's time actually trentino see you then thanks for watching bye for now